what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video first and foremost as always i hope everyone had a great weekend we got game five of the nba finals tonight but today we're going to be wrapping up finally wrapping it up uh of course the draft lottery rebuild series also if you didn't notice i did skip the oklahoma city thunder because we did a video on them just recently where i did draft in that video as well as obviously i did the offseason rebuild so i kind of combined those two together so now we're just simply talking about the sacramento kings and i think it's no secret that we can all agree that the sacramento kings cannot stay complacent again this offseason they chose to do that last summer they chose continuity obviously they paid for it they missed the playoffs of course they made the plan but they didn't make the playoffs as they did the year before so they definitely need to make some changes. I'm kind of going into this video blind. I don't really have a game plan for the Kings necessarily, but they are drafting with pick number 13, whether they choose to trade or draft to the pick. Let's just go ahead, jump in and do this 13th overall pick Sacramento Kings rebuild. Before we get into today's video, make sure you guys drop a like on this one and subscribe if you are new to this channel. As always, greatly appreciated. We're currently on the road to 50,000 subs. So if you're going to go ahead and hit that sub button to help us reach that goal, that would be amazing but other than that let's go ahead and talk about this sacramento kings roster oh, i guess um what i want to do is right here so mike brown got an extension so he is locked up for three years already but i'm gonna go ahead and just make it four for the vibes okay so that's taken care of but outside of mike brown getting extension sabonis is also changing his number which is interesting but uh that's not really that important darren fox a bonus of course is the duo uh keegan murray is a really good piece for them as well malik monk has an impending free agency Definitely curious to see if the Kings are able to keep him. I would not be surprised if he is signed somewhere else. I think there is a couple teams like Detroit that might offer him a ton of money. Detroit being a team that needs three-point shooting. Will not be surprised if they look at Malik Monk. You also have Barnes' contract who they chose to resign last summer. I absolutely hated that deal when they made it. And, uh, you know, still don't like it. Keon Ellis, Trey Lyles, Kevin Herter, Joe McGee. But, uh, and then Sasha apparently wants out of the Sacramento Kings. I saw that report the other day. Uh, not that that's that notable, but that is there. All right, so... Clearly, this team needs to make a change. That's just kind of what it is. I think Sabonis, Foxkey, and Murray, of course, are the three guys you're locked in as you're starting, or, you know, part of your starting five. Whether that's Monk leaving or trading Barnes away in a trade, they need to make a new addition to the squad. So we are going to look at all possible options on the table for the Sacramento roster, whether that's drafting with the pick, which we still might try to do. Maybe we find a way where we can, you know, swap picks similar to what we did in the Jazz video, something like that or you know we'll do something different so we will absolutely figure it out but i'm gonna fill out this coach staff fairly quickly and then we can get straight to work uh so we got that all taken care of so now all we need is a guard grew and we should be good to go and then we can talk about what our options are so of course you know i'm gonna bring up the same old guys but i definitely think we're gonna stay away from the guy i've traded for twice recently so let's go to draft night and let's take a look at all possible trade options so all possible trade options of course the Knicks, you know, they probably have nobody you can get right now. Probably not. I mean, maybe you can get, but we're looking at forwards. Base forwards or guards is basically what we're looking for if you're the king. So, first option that comes to mind, obviously, Mikel Bridges. That's obvious. Everyone in their right mind, if you're in the NBA and you're a contender, you probably want Mikel Bridges. So that's definitely something to always. And then you got Brandon Ingram potentially in New Orleans. Maybe the Kings want to make a deal for him. Uh, you know, we got. Does Toronto have anybody left? No, not really. Not at the moment. Uh, but obviously, the other guy I was going to mention, Kakuzma. I have got him, though. And they almost traded for him one time, of course, before the Russell Westbrook deal went uh, went down. Uh, so, yeah, Kyle Kuzma to the Sacramento Kings could make sense as well. But I've gotten him recently twice, so I'm going to stay away from that today. I have heard some things about Zach Levine. I know the Kings tried to sign him to an offer sheet years ago. Not really sure I would love that for them. I think they should probably try to get a more defensive player. Uh, but hey, if you wanted to go get Levine, maybe. Maybe they like the idea of DeRozan in a sign and trade. That's definitely possible. Maybe the Kings want, I mean, Jarrett Allen, probably not. Uh, Simonis Jarrett Allen fit probably would be kind of disgusting. Probably wouldn't work. Boston's probably going to give you nobody. Obviously, the Grizzlies probably aren't going to give you anybody. The Hawks definitely have a few pieces like, you know, maybe you can get DeAndre Hunter. Uh, maybe Capella if you wanted a back of five, you know, whatever. I don't know. So there are some options on the table. Of course, there's like Utah's Lauren Marketing. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore all options with this pick. We're going to try to think of a bona fide trade to start off this video with a banger. That way we add this Kings team uh, or we're making the right decision for this Kings team to make sure we are doing our very best to try to improve. So that is what we'll do. So we'll go ahead and try to make a trade or draft a 13 or do a pick swap, whatever it may be. We'll get it figured out.
Today's video is brought to you by DGF's Optimizer. If you play on apps such as Price Picks, Underdog, or any other DFS app, having a tool like this is so clutch to finding good plays right in front of you without having to do any research whatsoever. For example, NBA Finals Game 5, as I said, is tonight. And folks are favoring Dante Exum to go over two and a half points. He's been pretty good in the last two games for the Dallas Mavericks. And Derek Lively to go under 10 and a half points plus assists. So maybe they're predicting a Derek Lively has a bad game tonight, according to sports books. And then, uh, you know, Dante Exum maybe makes a three tonight. So uh, that's definitely possible. And is there any other options? You got like a couple baseball plays on the board. It looks like they're not favoring Sam Hauser. Going to, you know, go over six and a half points to assist. But as you can tell, I found all these plays right in front of me without having to do any research, which is why I absolutely love this tool by a mile. And uh, make sure to check it out. Link is down in the description below. 25% off your first month. I've been a much more profitable sports better since I've started using it. And now we go to Price Picks, which is an app, of course, I use the uh, optimizer to use on um, Price Picks. And the way Price Picks works, you choose between two to six players. Um, so if you wanted to go to Luka Doncic over 32 and a half points, and you wanted to combine that with, uh, you know, you could really, if you really want to get crazy, you could combine it with an NFL season prop if you really wanted to do that, uh, which would be kind of psycho. But yeah, there's all kinds of options to choose from for real. So make sure to check out Price Picks. Also down in the description below, link is down in the description below. Use code CRUSHBULLS. Uh, they match first deposit, dollar for dollar, up to $100. DGF, 25% off, 25 off first month. So other than that, let's get back to the video. So I think I've just thought of the perfect scenario for the Sacramento Kings. So here's what I'm thinking, right? Uh, and I'm a Blazers fan, as you guys know, or most of you know. But I'm still going to try to work this in the Sacramento Kings' favor today. So, if I was a Blazers fan, I'd want this to be different. But, since I'm trying to help the Kings out, this is what I'm going to do. I think a player that would make a ton of sense for them right now, of course, is Jeremy Grant. I wanted them to maybe pursue him in the offseason last summer, of course. Grant signed a big, fat contract to the Blazers, and I understand his contract is not a, that appealing. Uh, he's also sat out a lot of games for the Blazers because they're always tanking, and they just throw him on the injury report when he's probably not really injured. Regardless, though, I think Jeremy Grant would be a fantastic piece to put next to Sabonis. Um, as Sabonis is a fantastic rebounder, Grant is not so much. Uh, but Grant is a good team defender, so I think having Grant in Sacramento would be very, very nice for them. So that's who we're going to try to get. But I'm also going to try to get 14 back while I offer 13. But uh, we're going to do something... So we're going to keep a lottery pick, hopefully. We move down one spot, we get Jeremy Grant. But we got to obviously offer more than that. So... I'm going to throw Barnes contract in here because we have to move it if we're doing this trade. And then maybe we throw like Davion Mitchell in here who has some trade value uh, to the Blazers. And then maybe we throw like, uh, do we have anybody else? Maybe I have uh, Colby Jones we can throw in here. And then maybe another future first round pick. Something along the lines of that. So you got 13 for German Grant and 14 with Barnes, Davion Mitchell, Colby Jones, and a 2028 Sacramento unprotected. What do you think, Portland? What do you say? They agree. So just like that, we keep a lottery pick, but we add Jeremy Grant. Something like that. You could obviously tweak the trade to your liking. Maybe you think Grant is not worth that much, and I could definitely understand that. Uh, maybe I didn't have to include that 28th overall pick, but whatever. It's all good. Uh, or sorry, not 28th overall. 2028 first round pick. Um, as I said, I was going to try to swing that for the Kings, but whatever. Jeremy Grant, solid player, and I think he'd fit uh, like a glove in Sacramento. So he will play our small forward spot, which is fantastic. And we still get to draft at 14. So what we got dropping to us at 14, I have no idea. So, so far, Alex R. Ron Holland go one and two. Uh, Collier goes to the Rockets. Number four is Montez Bezalis. Number five is going to be Stefan Castle. Zachary Richache has not been drafted yet, by the way. Portland's going to get him. So that's pretty solid. Uh, Reed Shepard to the Spurs. Okay. Uh, Tyler Smith to the Grizzlies. Rob Dillingham to... Uh, the Jazz, and then you got uh, Cody Williams. That's kind of who I was going to take if he fell this far, but unfortunately, he does not. Nikola Topic to the Thunder, and then you got Juan Nunez to the Blazers. Okay, so 14 for us. We have Donovan Klingon with Jacoby Walter, with Tijon Slon, Zach Eady. A lot of different options we could take here. Keelan Ware, Tristan Silva, Missy. Um, Klingon obviously is going to fall this far. There's so many rumors about him going to the top three. Jacoby Walter might be a good replacement to Malik Monk if they're going to lose him. I also don't hate the idea of Tijon Salon, though. So who do we want to take is the question. I'm not sure. I think uh, this is tough. Don't connect obviously would be a great pick here as well. Klingon, you really can't you really can't go wrong here. There's a lot of good options here. Klingon as the backup five. They do maybe need a backup center to be better defensively. You know what? I'm going to take Klingon. Although I don't think he'll fall this far in real life. I'm going to take him for the Kings. He could be our backup five to uh, DeMontis Zabonis. So I don't think that's bad at all. So we'll take him. He could maybe come in for when we need better defense. Sabonis is not the best run protector in the world, but uh, Klingon projects to be pretty good. So we'll take him. All right, free agency. 
So we've added German Grant and Donovan Klingon so far. Malik Monk is someone we can resign. If I'm the Kings, I'm going to attempt to resign him. I do believe, though, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, it's only giving me the ability to give him 17.41. I think he's going to get north of 20 million. I really do. I think Detroit's going to throw him a bag. Uh, but if he's willing to resign this, we'll, we'll give it to him. I'm surprised it's not letting me offer him more, by the way. But it's not letting me offer more than $17 million. So, very interesting. Is he even interested? He is. Okay. So, maybe he would want to take the Sacramento Kings hometown discount and just come back, which would be fine with me. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do that. So, let's get Malik Monk back, which would be huge, obviously. Malik Monk is a huge part of this offense. We'll take him. Alex Len, obviously not so worried about. And then we do have the ability to sign another good player, which is awesome. Okay. So, I am going to move Kevin Herter to small four because he's uh, six um six i believe or six seven so he can get away with it which is nice so kevin Herter is going to be our backup small forward so it'll go something like that so it'll be like this it'll be fox it'll be uh, malik monk keon ellis it'll be german grant kevin Herter. you have keegan murray trey loss for now and then Donovan klingon who we just drafted and demontis sabonis not a bad off season but we can still add another good player so you have kpj we have jill noel scotty pippen jr you have buddy healed who you know played in king uh sacramento for a little bit there coro Derek jones uh achua dario sarge batum uh, and he got like Drummond. Uh, but I think I like the idea of Donovan Klingon being our backup center right away. So I do prefer a backup guard rather than a... Um, and I think I'm going to go D'Anthony Melton. He could play some backup point guard for us. I'm going to go D'Anthony Melton here to be that uh, addition to this team. And just like that, I'm pretty happy with this Kings offseason. We didn't think of place it. We were able to add a couple guys here. So unfortunately, Grant does regress a little bit. Keon Ellis going up is nice though. Trey Lowes is up. Uh, and then you got McGee and Duarte going down and, you know, those guys going up. So not too shabby. Pretty good offseason. Sabonis going down kind of sucks, but, uh, you know, to be expected, Malik Monk. Love to see it. So we go to next season and see where this King team, Kings team projects to be under Mike Brown. We've added a few pieces here and we kept Malik Monk. So this to me would be a successful offseason if you are the Sacramento Kings getting a forward like Jeremy Grant. Whether it's Grant, Kuzma, Mikel, whoever it may be, just getting someone like that to add to this roster would be huge for the Kings, in my personal opinion. Um, and then you keep your, you know, keep a lottery pick if you're able to do something like that with the Blazers. I think that would be awesome. So three and a half balance. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, so three and a half balance. And then here is your rotation. So it's Darren Fox, Malik Monk, Jeremy Grant, uh, King and Murray Sabonis. All looks good to me. Kevin Hur, DeAnthony Mellon, Keon Ellis, and then Trey Lyles and Don McClingan. So that all looks fantastic to me. We're going to go ahead and submit the season as like or like this, and we'll see how it goes. Obviously, we're expecting or hoping to be a playoff team once again. We unfortunately missed last year. Hopefully, we can bounce back this year and get in. Uh, shot tendencies I wanted to check out. So, uh, you know, Fox shot tendency is great. Um, Malik Monks is an 80, and then Jeremy Grant's a 70. I want Grant to be, you know, pretty decent. We gave up some assets to get him. And then Herder, uh, all that looks good to me. So, uh, so bonus could score a little bit more as well. So, something like that. I'll see you guys at the end of year one. Probably won't stop at the deadline because uh, I believe our pick is O to the Atlanta Hawks. So we are going to have to take care of that first. But I'll see you guys hopefully at the end of the season with a successful record and making the playoffs outright. So at the end of this season, Jokic wins MVP. Nikola Top is your rookie of the year. So the Nikolas are dominating. Now it's Reed's sixth man. Victor Webb, Mignon, offensive player. Most group goes to Suggs. And Brunson is your clutch player. And Michael Malone is your coach of the year. And uh, Kyle Harper is your executive. So... As far as this season went for us, do we have anybody on our All-NBA team? We uh, could have Sabonis, but I did not see Sabonis. So no Sabonis or anything like that. Here's the All-Defensive first team and All-Defensive second team. Uh, and uh, let's go take a look at the stats. So third seed in the Western Conference. Taking a look at the player stats. I meant to look at Donovan Klingon made All-Defense or All-Rookie team, by the way. And I totally forgot to look. So let's see uh, where he's at. So uh, word history. He did make his second team All-Rookie, which is great. So... Uh, 21 and a half from Fox. He had 16 and 13 and nine from Sabonis, almost averaging a triple double as a big man, which is awesome. 15 for Keegan Murray, 14 from uh, Malik Monk, and 14 for Jeremy Grant. 11 from Herder, eight from Klingon, and seven. So not too bad. A pretty good season for the most part. I'll absolutely take that. So we are in the playoffs now, which is great because obviously we want to be back in the playoffs. We did not want to miss once again. So I am going to throw Klingon over uh, Trey Lauska. I definitely think, you know, having that big man presence, so, you know, to back up Sabonis is more important. So let's go ahead and uh figure out if we can beat the utah jazz around one i imagine we're going to be able to beat them they got tobias harris in the offseason nothing like nothing crazy other than that the team is relatively the same i guess simone came back after they traded him to detroit i believe right he got traded to detroit right uh, i'm pretty sure he did yes i know he did yeah so he went to uh detroit and now he's back in utah again nice all right similar in current round against the utah jazz to see if we can get on round one and if we get eliminated round one that would be kind of disappointing as we are down three to one two 
the Utah Jazz. So not great. So it looks like they do want Trey Lyles playing over Klingon, I guess. So let's go ahead and listen to the advice and see if we can come back from a 3-1 to one deficit. We are in Sacramento for this pivotal game five here. Uh, and we are going to barely win. So we won 32-12-12 for Sabonis. And now we go to game six in Utah. If we win this one, we go to a game seven in Sacramento. And then you never know. Anything is on the table. So let's see if we can do just that. So we are going to blow them out in Utah to force a game seven. So I was about to say, if we're about to be eliminated round one, we really have to reevaluate if a Sabonis Fox duo is something we're building around going forward, or do we need to add a, you know, another player here? But uh, let's see. So we are going to go to a game seven in Sacramento, and it looks like we're going to win. So we do win. So that definitely saved us a lot because like I said, I was really about to be like, okay, do we need to trade Sabonis Fox this off season? Because clearly that did not work. But now we get the Dallas Mavericks in round two. We have Luka, Kyrie, Exum, PJ Washington, Gafford, Lively. Now, obviously playing Luka Doncic is never a fun, I, you know, a fun thing to do. So I would not be surprised if we get eliminated pretty tragically here. But hey, we're in round two. We want a playoff series, which is great because the Kings have made it, but they haven't won a playoff series in a long time. So it's only current round and we're down three to one once again. So we came back three to one last series, but... I don't know if we're going to be able to do that here. That's going to be really tough to do on a Luka Doncic-led team. So let's see if we can uh, make it happen, though, as we are going to win this one. So maybe we do it. 28 in that one. And now we go to a game six in Dallas. If we win this one, we go to a game seven back in Sacramento. It's on the table, but I don't know, man. We'll see. So we are close, but it looks like they got it. So they are going to bounce us in round two. So where do we go from here is the question. So Dallas in... Denver is your conference finals. All right. So somebody current round against them. You got Denver and Orlando, and then Denver goes on to win the championship. All right. Player retirements. LeBron James is going to retire. Finally call it a career. And now we go to draft lottery. So lottery, I believe our pick is going to the Hawks this off season, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe that was uh, another time. Uh, let me see. So our pick is yes, it's going to Sacramento or to Atlanta. That's right. So the 25th pick goes to them. All right. So all of our picks should be freed up now, which is great. Although we traded 2028 picks, so obviously we can't trade our like 2027 or anything like that. But let's go to draft night uh, and let's figure out: Are there a is there a trade on the table we can make? We obviously have Kevin Herr's uh, contract, and then I actually don't know how much money we are locked up financially right now at the moment. So uh, with cap holds, we're still under the second apron, which is great. So uh, that's awesome. Um, and then Fox is a free agent or not a free agent. So we actually have people locked up. Everyone's locked up pretty much for another year. Crystal Arte is making $11 million. I forgot about that. So I think we should probably try to use Herder's contract. I did give her an extension, but his contract is really good. Um, so I don't think that would like really scare anybody off. So I think we try to make it work one more year with Sabonis and Fox. And if it doesn't work next year, then we really got to consider like, is this the duo to build around? So I think that's where we're kind of at. We're going to try to send... Maybe Lyles, Duarte, or wait. No, yeah, well, this is the summer. So Lyles is still locked up for another year, which is great. Uh, so yeah, I think we're probably going to look into, or am I looking at the wrong, am I still in the wrong year right now? I might be looking at the wrong year. Maybe Fox is a free agent. Hold on, this is a different ball game. No, I said Lyles is a contract. Maybe that's a cap hold. I have no idea, man. Or does he have a player option? Nothing. Okay. Did it tell me that Lyles is a contract? I'm pretty sure it did. Let's see. Or am I just being crazy right now? So uh, Fox you know, he's locked up. And then Lyles is making 10.4, unless that's just a cap hold. I don't know. Regardless, we're going to go look at the trade market and see if there's another move to be made here. So looking at the trade market, I have a few guys in mind that we could try to go for. If we shoot for the absolute moon, the Phoenix Suns were terrible. And Devin Booker is in the midst of his prime. And, uh, you know, we could try to get D book. It's probably going to be really hard to do so. But I'm going to try. Give it an old college try. Why not? So... To get Devin Booker, we're going to have to offer quite a bit of salaries, of course. So that probably has to mean moving Malik Monk, unfortunately, in this scenario. Um, Keegan Murray is probably somebody the Phoenix Suns would want, but we'll try to get rid of him without doing so. So let's offer up Malik Monk. Let's offer up... Actually, no, yeah, because this is the same position. So Malik Monk and Kevin Herter's salary. So that doesn't get us there quite yet. Um, probably have to offer D'Anthony Melton's salary, potentially. Donovan Klingon. I Let's offer Melton's salary. And then uh, we could trade. So we 20, traded our 2028 picks. We could trade our 2026. And then it doesn't give us the 2030, but pretend 2029 is 2030 because 2K doesn't let you reach out as far as you should be able to. And then maybe it's Klingon we have to throw in here, which would suck to do. But if we're getting Devin Booker 
and you know pairing them you know make it a big three with fox a bonus and booker uh you know that's gonna be oh dude i don't know i don't know if we should do this man like as cool as get devin Brook would be we'd be really limited limiting ourselves to what we could do going forward i can't do it as much as it would be cool we have grant on a terrible contract we have fox we have to resign like we're gonna be over the second apron like crazy that's gonna really limit on what we could do uh the depth would be just absolutely cooked so think i won't go for devin booker although that would have been a great idea but it would have been really hard to move or maneuver around that team surprisingly and weirdly enough one guy i kind of want and i think he'd be great here is rj barrett and i know that's not something that you're used to hearing but he he's locked up for two more years his contract of course is not a max so uh and he'd be a pretty good addition in my opinion at that starting two guard spot so you move malik monk back to the six man role uh and you can go for so we're gonna try it so let's see if the you know is, let's see if the raptors are willing to get rid of rj barrett obviously the hometown kid now that the, he's there but herder's contract should get it done and then we have to offer maybe not sasha or maybe not Klingon, obviously but maybe maybe it is unfortunately melton and then we offer that 2026 first i was talking about that we can offer now so herder melton and a 26 first for rj they say no fair enough um uh, maybe i have to do this after the draft because i'm not trying to offer okay they agree so that actually only took us a couple other seconds to get that done so that's w so um great we got rj barrett now in town so rj barrett although he's at the starting small forward spot i'm gonna move him to two guard so he actually stays the same which is great which is nice so he's gonna stay at the two guard and uh you know it gives us a really good you know really good size at the two guard spot which is great so now you have fox you have rj malik monk you have uh jeremy grant and then duarte lyle so yeah all looking good so now we can go straight to player options so i'm feeling good about that hopefully uh do we keep yeah let's keep sasha although he's swanted out so i never solved that but chris duarte i don't think i'm bringing him back um and then lyle's of course i guess i was looking at a cap hold rather than what he was actually making so what do we need now so now that we have okay so we have keon ellis malik monk uh i guess we can move one of them to small forward although obviously keon ellis is not small forward size goes up to an 80 there so i'm gonna move him there uh he's not small forward size at all but you know he's just gonna be kind of there for now since blink monk is our two guard so and he's up to an 80 there so i'm not gonna uh hate on it. so Klingon is our backup center sasha is our backup four for now i kind of like the idea of getting jose alvarado uh can i get on a minimum no i cannot so what power four can i get uh kill martin trey lyles we can just bring back lyles we could loki uh, but I'm going to get, let's get Alvarado and let's see what our options are after that. So let's sign Alvarado. I'm not going to renounce Lyles because I might bring him back unless if he signs somewhere before, uh, it's too late. So he's still here. I think we just resign him because that's probably our best option as a backup four. So Trey Lyles, bring him back. And that is our off season. So now we've had RJ Barrett to this equation and now Klingon should develop, which will be nice. And then Keon Ellis went up to an 80. So hopefully, uh, this ends up working out next year. So we got to the second round last year, got eliminated. So hopefully this year we can make it further. We add RJ Bear to this equation. And then are we a second apron team now is the question. We're probably close, I assume. Yes, we are definitely a second apron roster now. So got to keep that in mind. But let's go straight to next season. And let's go ahead and see what we can do next year. Added RJ Bear, Jeremy Grant, got Malik Monk back. A lot of things we've done in this video cling in. So we've built this Kings roster up to potentially trying to contend. Let's see if it ends up working out this year for us or not. So another end of the season that goes fairly well. The regular season went better than last year. We went from the third seed this year to being a second seed. So do we get an All-NBA first team representative? Let's see. So yeah, Sabonis so makes it, which is awesome. All-NBA second team. Fox, not there, I don't believe. So yeah, uh, Sabonis so making it, which is great. All offensive first team and all defensive second team. So we actually ended up as a second seed, as I mentioned. And we did also extend De'Aaron Fox at the extension deadline. No brainer there, obviously. But here were your player stats. Let's go take a look at that as we are going to be seeing who we play out of the plan so 23 from fox 18 for Sabonis. uh once again almost average triple double 17 from rj 16 from Malik monk 15 for keegan murray and 15 for jeremy grant so to me we have like six six guys here then give you 20 on any given night which is a great feeling to have so let's go ahead and see if that pays off in the playoffs or not so we get the grizzlies around one who you know is a tough team usually so uh you know got our work cut out for us here early but hopefully we can take care of them they win game one and we once again find ourselves down three to one all right not fan not 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 ideal whatsoever especially after going all in as much as we have around this core with fox and sabonis and so far it has not paid off uh to the fullest at all so if we get bounced around one here 
which we do to the king uh, sacramento Gri or sacramento grizzlies to the memphis grizzlies we get bounced around one not great feeling not a great feeling at all we might have to consider our options this off season do we move on from sabonis to go off or do we try one more year and run it back I don't know. That's a good question. So we don't really have the draft capital to make another big trade here. And I do believe I like the roster we built. Maybe it's firing Mike Brown after all the disappointments we've had. Maybe that is the answer. Let's see what candidates we got out here. So we see, I think we got to fire Mike Brown. I think if someone has to be held accountable, not that I think it's his fault, but usually as you guys know in real life, if something like that were to occur, someone's getting fired and it ain't going to be me. So we're going to fire Mike Brown. Tyron Lue, you want to come coach the Kings? He should. Yeah, let's go. So we get Tyron Lue. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe just run it back with a new head coach. Maybe that's what we do. I don't know. We can look at a Sabonis trade potentially, but Sabonis' stats in 2K are incredible. So it's not like he's like regressing or anything. Like he's putting up triple-double numbers. So I don't know, man. We could look. See, if we traded Sabonis right now, we're not going to add anything to it. Just offer Sabonis. So we can get Evan Mobley and uh, Lonzo Ball. Obviously, we're over the second apron, so we can't combine a contract. Jared Allen, let's see, Kawhi, Jaren Brand Clark, Mark and Hart. Low key, I honestly believe I'm just going to run it back. I'm going to run it back. I'm simply going to run it back, man. I don't think I'm doing much this offseason. We've put together the roster I'm comfortable with. Of course, we're going to accept Klingon's team option. Uh, Keegan Murray, we're going to have to resign him, so we're going to be even more uh, in poverty. So, Keon Ellis, I'm going to resign him as well. I'm already signed both Keanos and Keegan, and uh, we're going to run it back for a final hoorah, I think. So we've put together the roster we want. We get a new head coach in town, hoping that fixes all the problems. We'll see if it does. Got off a rotation once again. We're going to run it back and expect different results. Is that the best thing to do? Probably not, but uh, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. So RJ's up to 85. Klingon is up. Trail is up. All that's looking great. I'll see you guys at the end of season number three. Tyron Lue is the coach. I'm hoping for better results. So once again, another good regular season. Uh, second seed in the West again for us. But again, none of that really matters if we're getting bounced around one. So bonus makes on a third team again. One thing I did notice, though, is our proficiency did go up under Tyron Lue. We're four and a half, which feels great. Obviously, the better proficiency, the better results, I imagine. So we're going to run it back once again. Trey, I, I, you know, let's go to an aim. Let's go aim and rotation for these, uh, for these playoffs. So that leaves Trey Lyles out of the rotation, which I'm totally okay with. So Keon Ellis, Klingon, uh, and Malik Monk being the only three guys come off our bench, I think is more than enough. So Denver round one, we get to deal with Jokic. Don't love that for us, but, uh, they, they did lose Jamal Murray at least. Hopefully we don't get bounced around one here. So many current round against Denver as we drop game one, we were about to be down three to one again, and we're up three to two. Do we go? Yes. Okay. Move on to round two by beating them in six W. All right. Now we get the Houston Rockets. We have DJ Wider, Amon Thompson, Brooks, Jabari, Shingun, Jalen Green, Cameron Whitmore, Tar East, and Isaiah Collier. To be honest with you guys, I don't love our chances here. The Rockets are a very good young team. Our team's good as well. So maybe I'm not giving ourselves enough credit. So we'll just see how it goes. Game one, one to zero. Off to a good start. They even it up. Game three, two to one. Game four, we're going to even this one up. And we're down three to one. Maybe it's just not meant to be today. Maybe it's just not meant to be, but maybe we come back from three to one. We'll give it our best shot. So we're going to have to win this one. And then we force a game six back in Houston. And then we'll see if we win that one. All right. So game six in Houston. Give less miss Malik Monk, I guess. We'll do that. And here goes nothing. So game six in Houston to force a game seven back to Sac Town. Can we do it is the question. So far, it's a close game. And it looks like they might be bouncing us here. We're down 10. If we make this close at the end, I'll jump in, but it's not looking... Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Yeah, it's it's cooked, boys. So that might be all we can do. We ran it back with the same head coach, Chiron Liu, did not get any results differently. We could trade some bonus, but at this point, I went all in with this team, and the fact of the matter is we are a second apron roster now, and I don't know if there's much else we could do. I mean, do we trade Sabonis and try something different? I feel like the team would get worse if I trade Sabonis, to be honest with you, though. I don't know, man. It's tough. It's tough to determine what the right result is to do because is there really much of a better backup or better center we're going to get than DeMontis Sabonis? I think we just end it there, boys. Uh, we got Orlando, Oklahoma City, and the Thunder go on to win the championship. Uh, Orlando, of course, uh, you know, gets bounced for. So, was not meant to be. Maybe we do a video next time splitting up Sabonis and Fox. I don't know. I think we did our best possible, you know, best possible thing we could do. 
trying to build around Sabonis and Fox. We got plenty of size. Uh, just didn't just didn't work out as simple as that. So hope you guys enjoyed regardless. I will see y'all in the next one. Not sure what we're gonna do tomorrow just yet, but I will unless if Celtics win, then I guess we'll do a Celtics video tomorrow. But on that, this is Crushables. I'm saying ace. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you click here to watch another video that I know you'll love.